Hello you all, I'm Black Witch Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And today, yet again, we are in the South. And usually when people think of the South, immediately they think of the Bible Belt is just a whole bunch of Bible carrying Christians walking around praising the Lord. But in actuality, in my belief, I feel like we have the most spiritual folklore, beliefs, paranormal activity, crazy stories. Majority of the time, when people send me a story that they want to share on my channel, more than likely they live in the South because the South is just where all the culture is at so today we are in the south again and usually these type of stories takes place in states like florida georgia the carolinas or in louisiana where we are today but not in new orleans like usual we are in a small town right outside of new orleans by the name of saint francisville and we are on the myrtles plantation and this is going to be one of my many haunted house stories y'all don't mess with these slaves not the spirits coming back to get y'all type of story for spooky season since halloween is approaching now for the myrtles plantation this specific home is not only the most haunted house in louisiana the south but the entire united states of america and that's what we're going to talk about today you may be wondering what happened how did myrtle's plantation get this title of the most haunted house in the usa Let's take it all the way back to 1796. The Myrtles Plantation was built in 1796 by General David Bradford, a successful attorney known for his involvement in the Whiskey Revolution. The Whiskey Rebellion was a tax protest against the federal government's taxation of whiskey production. Bradfield was a leader of the rebellion in Western Pennsylvania and was involved in organizing meetings and protests against the tax. This was the government's first time trying to implement a tax and I guess whiskey was the wrong thing to tax. So there was a march on Pittsburgh orchestrated by David. No deaths took place with just a bunch of damage of property. Since the U.S. government was new, many people just listened to David. So it was so much chaos going on that it caught the attention of George Washington. George Washington pulled up with 1,300 soldiers to David and was like, oh, what was said? Oh, we heard Gene like the way I was running stuff. So what happened? And basically told him to get his behind up out of Pennsylvania. And that's when he ran away and made his way down to Louisiana. So he got his footing in Louisiana. He built the Myrtles Plantation. So before David Bradford decided to make the Myrtles Plantation his little house, hideout this was actually sacred land owned by the Tanika tribe when he was building the Myrtles plantation he ran up on a grave site of bodies and instead of stopping right there after realizing that this is sacred land he decided to dig up all the bodies and burn them in 1820 the Myrtles plantation gained a new resident but he did not move in alone Clark Woodruff married David Bradford's daughter Sarah Bradford he moved in, married Sarah to help take care of her elderly mother and also to help run the plantation. So I'm assuming you guys know we are in the 1800s. So when I say the word plantation and Clark Woodruff moved in to help run the plantation, he came in to be another slave owner because he actually owned a bunch of slaves himself. He was a horrible person and a horrible husband because he was cheating on his wife by sexually abusing one of the slaves on the property by the name of Chloe and she is going to play a pivotal part in this story so remember the name Chloe. So before I finish this story I do want to give a trigger warning for abuse and assault because Clark Woodruff would consistently and continuously R word Chloe. Chloe of course tried to protect herself from this assault and during this time slaves found out the more information that they knew on their slave owners getting to know their patterns what time do they leave what time do they wake up what's the first room they walk to when they wake up how long do they spend in the bathroom learning those patterns and different routes that they take would in the end sometimes help them for protection being able to avoid them of course Chloe took on this information trying to learn more about them but she took it a step further and she would also eavesdrop on conversations as well to see if she could hear someone saying oh I'm going into town at this time someone's going to take a nap for the rest of the day she wanted to get as much information as possible so she know where not to be when Clark was doing whatever he was doing but the slaves also warned her like okay you in the house you got this close access to them don't get caught eavesdropping and that's exactly what happened one day Chloe was caught with her left ear to the bedroom door of Clark and Sarah Woodruff and as a punishment, Clark cut off her left ear. Chloe's left ear was cut off and Clark realizing what he did, now he's like, oh, now my pretty little doll has a flaw. Let's cover that up. He made her cover up where her ear used to be with the green turban to wrap around her head and keep it wrapped at all times so he wouldn't have to see it. So he assaulted her then gets insulted by the result of the assault. So during this time, Chloe was silent. She was angry. She was plotting out her revenge. She didn't know what to do or how to do it. 
until an opportunity presented itself one day. It was the children's birthday, and who else better to make a cake than the house servant, Chloe? So Chloe took this as her opportunity to poison the cake. She took the juice of an Orlander leaf, mixed it inside the cake, and served it to the family for a good old happy birthday. Now, there are a few takes on this story. On one side, it's told that she actually wanted to poison and kill the entire family to free herself, to free the slaves, just so they could just get rid of everyone at once. And on the other end, it said that she didn't want to kill the family. She just wanted to make them really sick and then nurse them back to health so she could get back in the good graces of Clark. Like, look, I just saved your family. Keep me in the house. Don't make me work in the fields as a punishment anymore. So it's two takes on it. I think she just wanted to kill them because I'm like, why not? You're going to nurse them back to health and they're going to treat you the same way. So I feel like she just wanted to off them. So, of course, as planned, when the mother and the children were eating the cake, they grew very, very sick and ended up dying from their sickness. So Clark is pissed off. He's trying to figure out what happened, who did it. And then the slaves, like I told you before, they warned Chloe like, hey, you need to stop eavesdropping. She didn't listen, got her ear cut off. And then now they didn't want to face the punishment of what Chloe did because they knew Clark favored Chloe, even though he was still being a asshole to her. They knew that he favored Chloe. So they said, listen, we ain't finna take the punishment for you. You did it. So they said, hey, Chloe's the one that punished them, that poisoned them. She was trying to do it the whole time, blah, blah, blah. They turned against her. So Clark stormed inside the house, drug Chloe out the house. He didn't want to kill her. So he made the slaves hang her. Once she died, he threw her in the swamps behind the plantation. And he threw her in the swamps to get rid of her body and also for the alligators to go ahead and eat her. Now when guests visit the Myrtle's plantation, because you can visit this place, some guests report that they see a woman from the waist up coming up from the swamps, a beautiful black woman with her head wrapped in a green turban. So there is an alternate ending to this story because as we know during this time, a lot of blame was placed on slaves. In this ending, it is documented that the mother and children didn't die from poisoning. They died from yellow fever. So it's reported that the wife knew that the husband was sleeping with Chloe. The wife grew jealous of Chloe. So she was running around town spreading rumors about her. So that's how the first lie was made. Like, oh, the mother and the children died. Chloe must have did it to get closer to the husband. So you guys let me know what you think happened in that instance. If you're from this town, you heard of the story before, what were you told? There are many translations of it, but let me know the version you heard or what do you believe? Also, that's why some say the reason she haunts the land because she was unfairly killed because she didn't poison the family, but yet that blame was put on her. And one of the children didn't even die. We're going to hear more about her. She lived a long life until 71. So after Chloe's death, the plantation was a site of just gruesome activity. Keeping up with the spirit of Chloe, we're going to fast forward a little bit to 1992, then we're going to rewind. So the current owners in 1992 took a photo of the home just to get the structure and the layout and the condition of the roof for insurance purposes and then they noticed once the photo was developed there was a strange shadow of a person in the photo after the photo was examined they realized it was the height and shape of an average woman with her hair wrapped up and once learning about the stories that took place on this property they came to the conclusion that it was the spirit of chloe floating around making her presence known to the new owners also there's documentation of guests reporting that they also see two little blonde girls running around in the rain but they somehow remain dry while playing they associate these two blonde girls with the two daughters that was killed on the property from chloe or from yellow fever but Chloe's spirit and the two blonde girl spirit never seem to interact. Currently, even till this day, there is an area in the dining room where a lot of people trip and fall. And so many people were tripping that the owners for liability purposes made sure they keep that area clear because they could not figure out why does everyone trip and fall right here? The floor isn't uneven, the carpet isn't rolling up. What's causing people to trip and fall in this certain spot? Well, we're winding back a little bit. So in 1834, this area was not a dining room. It was actually a game room and during an intense game Ruffin's son was shot due to a gambling debt he tried to crawl and get help but in that very spot outside what's the dining room now is where he took his last breath so exactly where his body is is where a lot of people trip so the story goes that many people are tripping over his body his spirit that's still dormant there just how chloe was thrown into the swamps after her death her spirit is usually seen around the swamp area the children were celebrating their birthday that's why the two 
two blonde girls are found in the rain playing around because when they died it was around their birthday so usually and we'll get into this later when a person dies in a certain room in a certain position it's told that their spirit will favor that spot because that's where they last had life so they'll go back to that spot to re-energize themselves that's why if you have someone who passes away in your home maybe they passed away in their sleep usually depending on how close you were to them or just the energy that's present if you go into that room you'll kind of get an eerie feeling like someone else is in the room with you because usually that spirit will favor that certain spot because that's where they transition that's their portal so ruffin passed away leaving his wife a widow so his wife mary ended up passing the plantation down to their daughter named sarah and she eventually married a man by the name of william winter in 1852 they had a daughter named kate who died in the same way as the family previously she died of yellow fever as well she was confined to her bedroom which today is called the william winters room so during this time kate the daughter who was two years old was getting sicker and sicker by the day so desperate times calls for desperate measures even though i don't feel like this was a desperate measure they called in a voodoo priest which was a enslaved woman at the time to come in to help cure their daughter they heard a lot about this woman helping curing people so they had a lot of faith in her so when she couldn't do it they got pissed off at her and felt like she did it on purpose so they ended up killing the voodoo priest because they felt like she didn't give her all in order to save the daughter so the kate the daughter ended up passing away from yellow fever in that very room at two years old so when this story is told it is believed that the voodoo priest which was a enslaved woman was like listen y'all killed chloe on this property you think i'm about to save your little kid no so then one day in 1871 william heard a voice calling him from outside he stepped outside on the porch he didn't see anyone all he heard was a gunshot aiming and shooting him he tried to crawl back into the home calling for his wife asking for help she ran downstairs meeting him on the 17th step where she couldn't do anything but hold him and comfort him while he while he was dying until this day when visitors come to the myrtles plantation they say when they walk by the staircase they can hear a woman moaning and crying which is told to be william winter's wife sarah's cry again in the spot where the body dies is their portal so usually the energy is stronger right there that's why sometimes when you watch like ghost hunters or any type of paranormal activity show they'll always feel a certain area in the house where that person must have died that's where the connection is stronger that's where they feel the energy or whatever little machine trigger that they be using it may go off a little bit more in a certain spot so along with all this there is a lot of other reports by guests when they visit the myrtles plantation let me know if you ever visit this place before I have a trip coming up to New Orleans, so I may visit just as, I don't know, I'm a little nosy. So, one, of course, is Chloe. They report to see ghostly figures in 19th century attire. They see unexplained footsteps, hear unexplained voices and whispers, and they have heard this throughout the entire house, often attributed to the spirits of former occupants. Of course, what will a haunted house be without moving objects? Objects are said to move on their own, doors open and close by themselves, and furniture shifts without any cause. Mysterious handprints have appeared on mirrors and windows and there are certain cold spots in the home they'll walk through the house nice and warm but in a certain spot they'll just get chills and they'll just be freezing cold in certain areas so it's common to think okay if you got killed wrongly in a certain location in the physical world why would your spirit want to linger around there isn't it just bad memories or why would you still want to be there so that you go to a place where you felt your happiest so there's actually studies behind this paranormal activity of why spirits linger or haunt certain areas where their deaths occur occurred one is simply unfinished business according to this theory spirits may remain on earth if they have unresolved issues or a sense of injustice about their deaths in the case of enslaved individuals who were subject to brutality oppression and violence may be believed to linger due to the trauma and injustice that they experience next is restless souls i feel like a lot of us have heard of this the idea of restlessness or vengeful spirits is often associated with tragic and violent deaths in the case of enslaved individuals many endured unimaginable suffering and their spirits might be taught to seek justice or retribution historical trauma some 
Some prominents of this theory argue that trauma experienced by enslaved people during their lives may leave an imprint on the land itself resulting in the residual hauntings or ghostly phenomenon. In some cultures and beliefs, it is believed that spirits of those who suffer unjust deaths may linger in a state of unrest until justice is served or until they find peace. So that's why sometimes in movies, they're on a mission to get justice for a person that died in order for the spirit to stop hunting the house. Usually the mission or the theme around the movie is like, this person got killed unjustly. We need to find the daughter of the daughter of the son of the son who did it. Get vengeance on them so they can leave this home and we can live here peacefully. So the Myrtles Plantation went on to be the set of an actual movie by the name of The Long Hot Summer. And visitors and actors on set say that they actually seen furniture being moved around without no one in production or set directors moving anything. I'll link the website below hauntedwalk.com where this story is coming from. One of the most disturbing paranormal reports occurs inside the home in the Grand hallway there is an antique mirror just outside of the dining room the visitors report seeing woodruff children appear in the mirror near the room where they were poisoned one researcher noted that each time the mirror is replaced or resilvered the same handprint reappears as if they refuse to be ignored despite the many ghost stories there is some debate if chloe ever existed or if that was her real name. Today, this residence is known as the Myrtles Plantation Bed and Breakfast, but is also recognized as one of the most haunted houses in America, according to the National Geographic. They offer historical tours through the day and into the dark of the night. But let me know down below, have you guys ever visited a actual haunted house? I'm not talking about no Halloween Horror Nights, but like a real deal haunted house. Have you ever slept there? Would you ever sleep in like a haunted house or a hotel? Let me know down below. I kind of want to do it, but I'm a loner, so I wouldn't have nobody to do it with. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. And like I always say, as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. Until next time, you guys, I'll change. Baby.